What's good everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about what I consider to be the dark side of the LGBTQ uh, plus movement. Now, before everybody gets all err and runs to the comments to tell me how much of a terrible person I am and how I'm a homophobe and whatnot, um, I just want to say that I'm not. Simply, I'm not a homophobe. I don't care if people like people of the same sex. If you like a dude and you're a dude and you want to go get married, I don't care. I think people should have individual freedom. Uh, that is my stance on a lot of things like this. However, the reason that I want to talk about this is because I feel like there's clearly a movement of the LGBTQ+, which I think started out with very good intentions, honestly. I think that's where it came from. However, I think it has turned into uh, a movement that also has a lot of uh, darkness surrounding it now. And that's what we were going to go over today. And the reason that I wanted to go over it was because what I'm about to show you broke my heart. And it's coming from a place of love that I'm sharing this video. Because I think more people need to be aware of the other, the flip side of this movement and what it can do to people, uh, not only psychologically, but physically. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. The first thing that I want to read to you guys is actually a tweet thread that I have. It's by this person named uh, Tulip. I think, I think. don't hold me to this, I, I think it was a, a, a man who transitioned into a woman and went through with the surgery and everything. I think that is kind of the whole story. So let's go ahead and I'll read it to you guys and I'll also put it on the screen as we're reading it. So, these are uh, Tulip's words from here on out. I'm similarly just reading the tweets. I want to tell everyone what they took from us, what irreversible really means, and what the reality looks like for us. No one told me any of what I'm going to tell you now. I have no sensation in my crotch region at all. You could stab me with a knife and I wouldn't know. The entire area is numb, like it's shell-shocked and unable to comprehend what happened, even four years on. No one told me that the base area of your penis is left. It can't be removed meaning that you're left with a literal stump inside that twitches. When you take testosterone and your libido returns, you wake up with morning wood without a tree. I wish this was a joke. And if you do take testosterone after being post-op, you run the risk of internal hair in the neo-vagina. Imagine dealing with internal hair growth after everything. What a choice. Be healthy on testosterone and a freak or remain a sexless enooch. And that's something that will never come back, and one of the reasons why I got the surgery. My sex drive died about six months on HRT, and at the time I was glad to get rid of it. But now ten years later, I'm realizing what I'm missing out on, and what I won't get back. Because even if I had a sex drive, my neophagina is so, so narrow and small, I wouldn't even be able to have sex if I wanted to. And when I do use a small dilator, I have random pockets of some sensation that only seem to pick up pain rather than pleasure. Any pleasure I do get comes from the prostate that was moved forward and wrapped in the glands from the penis, meaning that anal sex isn't possible and can risk further damage. Then there's the dreams. I dream often that I have both sets of genitals. In the dream I've distressed, I have both. Why both, I think? I tell myself to wake up because I know it's a dream, and I awaken into a living nightmare. In those moments of amnesia, as I would wake, I would reach down to my crotch area expecting something that was there for three decades, and it's not. My heart skips a beat every single damn time. Then there's the act of going to the toilet. It takes me about 10 minutes to empty my bladder. It's extremely slow, painful, and because it dribbles, no matter how much I relax, it will then just go all over the entire area, leaving me soaking. So after cleaning myself up, I will find moments later that my underwear is wet. No matter how much I wiped, it slowly drips out for the best part of an hour. I never knew at 35 I ran the risk like smelling like piss everywhere I went. Now I get to the point where I'm detransitioned and the realization that this is permanent is catching up with me. During transition, I was obsessive and deeply unwell. I cannot believe they were allowed to do this to me, even after all the red flags. I wasn't even asked if I wanted to freeze sperm or want kids. In my obsessive, deeply unwell state, they nodded along and didn't tell me any realities what life would be like. And finally, there's dilation, which is like some sort of demonic ceremony where you impale yourself for 20 agonizing minutes to remind you of your own stupidity. This isn't even the half of it. 
And this isn't regret either. This is grief and anger. Fuck everyone who let this happen. So let's just soak that up for a minute. This is somebody who's gone through it. Okay? And I'm sure maybe that there are some people who don't regret their transitions. Well, and and that's great for them. I would hope not. But do you see the pain in this this thread, man? And if that does not break your fucking heart, man. You know? He says he he knows. He she whatever they go by, I don't even know. See, I don't want to get in that territory, but they they knew that they were unwell looking back and they are almost mad that people blindly nodded along to them and allowed them to do what they did to themselves in this state where they are deeply unwell and i think that it's important that we look at this and understand this story from this perspective because clearly this person regrets doing what they did and i think that We need to go about this in a different way. We shouldn't just be nodding along with everything when someone's unwell. There is a real thing of mental illness in a way. There is a point in which people can be deeply unwell mentally and do things that they think are right at the time that aren't right. And this goes for all different sorts of things. I mean, this goes for suicide, all different sorts of things like that. However, it's very it's very sad to see that at the end of this, after a few years after transitioning and stuff, they regret it. They regret it and they wish that they didn't do it. They wish that somebody stopped them. They wish that they really knew what they were getting into. And I feel like that's the problem with part of the movement is that people don't know that. They don't share these stories. They don't t- They don't ask people if they want kids. They, people don't fully know what they're getting into. I think it's just too willy-nilly that they're like, yeah, let's cut off your penis and do this horrendous surgery because you want to do it right now. I think we need to balance, you know, individual freedom and also making sure that that's what somebody truly wants. You see what I mean? Um, And I think we're getting a little too caught up in just blindly following all of this and it's starting to affect people negatively and that's scary to see. And my heart goes out to this person. It really does because feeling like that sucks. And it really does. And the fact that there's nothing that they can do about that, it's hurtful. It hurts me to see that. I wanted to start out with this tweet, um, but I also have a video. And this is a kind of another aspect of what I consider to be the dark side of the LGBTQ movement. So let's go ahead and check out this video. Uh, A little background on this video. So you guys might have seen this clip. It was going like kind of viral on TikTok. uh, If you guys uh, had seen that. Uh, basically it was like a mom and her two kids and they were uh, live streaming and somebody asked them a question so I just want you guys to see the whole response to the question white people that aren't like serial killers like Ted Bundy does your mom say you have to be LGBT um, no. no I can she's what I want to be but some t- but on. go ahead Lex go ahead keep talking say what you're saying um, my mom doesn't matter if I'm up if I am gay or lesbian or any of that. She doesn't care. All she cares about is that I'm a part of it. A smile, dude. And if I'm not a part of it, she'll try to convince me to uh, um, get, join it. Cause I. What are you saying right now? Did he just say? Oh, what the hell did he just say? Uh, facts. That I would convince you to join what? The LGBTQIA plus community. And the fact, and the fact that the the brother like agrees, he's like facts or whatever. Like, you see what I mean? And and so this is my problem with this movement is that the whole idea started out as you know it's important to be yourself. You got to be yourself and your true self. And that's how this whole movement started. Is is you shouldn't be ashamed of who you are. And if you like men, um, blah 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 blah, you should be allowed to do that. Which I agree with. I think everybody should be them themselves. I really do. However, the weird thing is, is that this movement has taken a turn to where people who are like this parent right here, the smile is everything. That, that smile, that little smile in the back, man, dude, I can't get that out of my head. Cause it's like, she knows it's about to go down. She knows she's in the wrong and she's trying to do this weird smile to like smooth it over. But like, she isn't letting her kids be themselves. She's forcing her kids to be part of something that they're not. So no longer 
is this movement fully about accepting who you are? It's about changing who people are and not accepting them for who they are because they don't fit into the little bubble or box that you've created that you want to put them in simply due to your ego. And that is my problem with it. And I I don't think everybody does this. I'm not saying everybody does this. However, to see this happening to kids, man, you know, we need to think about the kids for real because kids are like pieces of, of like clay. They're very, uh, imprintful. You can, you can mold them into different, in different ways because they're so young that they're learning, you know, and kids are innocent. I truly believe that kids are innocent and it hurts me to see innocent kids being used to push an agenda like this when clearly they've been tricked. They've been almost coerced into thinking that there's something that they're not. And that's, and that's sad because it's like, you can tell in this video that this kid isn't lying. This kid isn't lying. He's just, he's just answering a question. He's just sharing. He's almost defending his mom because he doesn't know that his mom's a piece of shit. He doesn't know. He's defending her. He's saying, he's saying, no, no, no. Listen, she doesn't care. She doesn't care if I'm a a she or whatnot. As long as I'm in it, she doesn't care. You know, like defending her that, you know, oh, she doesn't, she's not forcing me to, me to be in it or anything. But in a way, she still is. And, and it's almost like the kid is blind to that as well. Because the kid just thinks, you know, as long as we're in it, you know, it's fine. It doesn't matter what we are. We just have to be part of it. You don't have to be part of it if you're not it. You see what I mean? But it's like there's this added pressure where people are afraid to be themselves. Kids can't even be themselves anymore. So the movement that started off being, hey, we need to be ourselves, has turned into you can't even be yourself anymore. So this isn't coming from a place of love because you are not accepting someone for who they actually are, which it seems that your kids are actually not gay or in the LGBT community, which is fine. They don't have to be. Not everyone has to be. I'm assuming maybe the mom is or something or or whatever her agenda is to force her kids to be in it is its own thing. I'm not sure. I don't know. But It's sad. It's sad that we're getting kids involved. It's sad that we're manipulating kids and we're not letting even kids be themselves anymore. And these two things that I showed you today, this video and this tweet, are coming from different angles of it. But I think this is all encompassing of the dark side of the LGBTQ movement that nobody wants to talk about. Nobody wants to see these things. Nobody wants to understand the actual negatives that can come from happening. We should not be pushing LGBTQ plus on kids. Kids should be being kids. Okay? Kids don't need to know about this. I mean, at least save it, you know, until high school or something. If you're going to teach, you know? But it's like, why do we need to teach kids this? When I was a kid, I didn't care. I did not care what race kids were. I did not care about any of that. When I was a kid, I was being a kid. I liked to play at the park and run around and play in the grass. And I know kids don't do that these days and they're too busy I was scrolling through TikTok getting brainwashed by this garbage, but kids need to be kids, okay? And we need to let kids be kids and accept themselves before we start pushing agendas onto them that suit our ego or, or whatever it's getting out of this because this is not coming from a place of love anymore. That's just a fact. This is not coming from a place of love. And a lot of people have maybe twisted it and convinced themselves that it is, but it's not. It's really not because... If you love someone unconditionally, you love them for who they are, whether or not you agree with them or not. That's not what love is about. You don't have to agree with somebody to love them. And that's just the truth. So we need to stop. We need to let people be who they actually are. That's the deepest form of love. Trying to convince them that there's something that they're not, that is not love. Accept people for who they are, even if that doesn't fit into your LGBTQ ideology that you want your kids to have because it's the cool thing to do right now. It's a fad. It really is. It's something, it's like the cool thing to do right now. Everyone wants to be the the parent with the LGBTQ with the, you know, my kids and my pronouns and blah, blah, blah. I'm so woke and and aware, but you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not aware. You're, you're unaware of what you're actually doing to these kids, of the harm that you're actually doing to these kids disguised as love. And that's not love. And it never will be love. And that's my problem with this movement is I'm sure that there is love in this movement. And I'm sure that you can feel the love in this movement, just like you can feel the love in anything. But 
I know that you there's not always love in this movement. It's not always about love. So I hope that you can take uh, something from this video. I hope you can kind of see another point of view um, in this. Like I said, I believe in freedom for people. I think people should have the freedom to do what they want. That's kind of my stance on a lot of things. I'm very pro-freedom, probably more than some of you watching this video. So no, it's not about me hating gay people or whatnot. I don't have a problem with gay people. Never have, never will. I like to let people do their own thing. And I want people to let other people do their own thing as well. And it doesn't seem like that's always what's going on here. Thank you guys for watching. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace and love.